Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for coming to our bureau in Yerevan. And uh, I just want to start uh, by asking you, how do you evaluate the current state of Armenian-U.S. relationship? How would you describe? I'm very pleased to say the relationship is very good and very strong. Uh, we are partners uh, in a lot of areas, um, diplomatically, militarily, culturally. Um, I think the announcement of our trade and investment framework agreement that was signed last month uh, was a sign of that engagement and how strong the relationship is. I think Assistant Secretary Newland from the Department of State, who was here in February, um, a very high-ranking visitor, to have her visit as well, I think is a sign of how engaged we are with the Armenian people and the Armenian government. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, we, uh, we know that you're here helping Armenian government in many aspects, but one of them was uh, fighting corruption in Armenia. Uh, what is the interest of United States government in fighting corruption in Armenia? And um, I, I understand that is also part of your mission here to support uh, uh, building, uh, you know, democracy in the country, reforms. But would you just explain what is your main interest here? We are partnering with Armenian government, with Armenian civil society, the Armenian media to help fight corruption because it stymies the interests we share with the Armenian people. It stymies our goals for um, the Armenian state and for our relationship. You know, Harry, our, our goals are very simple, I think, for Armenia. We would like to see Armenia be free, prosperous, and at peace with its neighbors. And corruption uh, at all levels stymies that. Corruption sets back economic growth. It hurts human rights development. It undermines democracy. I think it even undermines the national security of a country where there's corruption. Outside forces can control the development of your country. So because we share these goals, we want to partner with the Armenian people to help fight corruption here. And, and I should be clear, you know, corruption is an issue that every government around the world has to fight every day. We have to fight it in the United States. We have instances of corruption. And the question is whether a government has the tools and the political will to fight corruption, whether there's a civil society that can help partner with government to fight it. So that's our goal, to help the Armenian government have the tools it needs, to help civil society, to help the Armenian people stand up and put a spotlight on issues of corruption and, and help, help fight it. Uh, previously, we had sort of like uh, projects, schemes, uh, like uh, Millennium Challenge accounts. Uh, we, we, you were doing through these projects, but it seems to me this is just one item, a big item that is important for you. Is it the case? It is an important item for us, absolutely. Um, as I said, it can stymie all our goals that we share with the Armenian people. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I should say this idea of building transparency, building accountability into Armenian life and uh, Armenian governance, this works through all our programs. It's a part of everything we do. Mm -hmm. We want to make our programs as open as possible. We want to help make Armenian government as transparent and open as it should be. So it's a part of everything that we do in many ways. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, do you also talk to uh, civil society members like you know, public, are you discussing this issue also with them? Absolutely. In fact, last night I hosted an event to highlight this issue of, mm -hmm. of fighting corruption. And I wanted to spotlight the Armenian partners that we have here, both in the government, but particularly in civil society that work on this issue. So I brought them to my house last night and we met and we talked and um, uh, I learned a lot about what they're doing, what works, what doesn't work sometimes. Mm -hmm. And also gave them a chance to meet with Armenian government officials, people that really can control some levers on this issue. Um, and let me say, it's a partnership. Yes. Civil society has to play a role with government to address this, this question. One of our programs, actually, that we fund through USAID is to empower civil society groups that are focused on corruption and building more transparency, more accountability into Armenian life. We help those organizations talk to the Armenian people and reach out and do their work. And, but, uh, Mr. Ambassador, there's also, uh, you know, 
belief among the civil society members that the very, uh, uh, you know, this body that has been created, set up by the prime minister himself, like Council, Anti-Corruption Council, he's, um, you know, like chairing this council, and there's also another member, high-ranking uh, official in that council, finance minister, and some of the prominent civil society members believe that these guys are the source of corruption. Or if not the source, then they are risk for the corruption. They are corruption risks. Uh, how would you, you know, convince the public and uh, the uh, civil society members that actually this can work? Well, let me be clear. It's yes. up to the government yes. to convince the Armenian people <laughs> that the Corruption Council <laughs> is real and a real effective tool. And that's not our role. And let me also be clear, I think there is a misconception sometimes that we, we are funding the Anti-Corruption Council. Um, that's not really what we're doing. We are providing some specific aid for specific aspects of the Council's work. For, for instance, we're providing some technical expertise to help them come up with a possible work plan mm -hmm. of steps to address corruption in government services, in the legal services, police services. We we'll also help fund a very specific program so the council can talk to the Armenian people, do public outreach, listen to what the Armenian people are saying about corruption. So two very specific programs. To be honest, we don't hand money over to, to the council members <laughs> themselves. Um, and, you know, I, I, I understand. I understand why people can be perhaps skeptical about the council, about any government effort to fight corruption. And let me just say, the embassy, the U.S. government, we view the council as a tool, as a commitment by the government to address this issue, which they've made publicly. I'm willing to work with any institution of the Armenian government that is committed to fighting corruption. And so we will work with this council. But as I've said, we expect to see actions. Words aren't enough. And we will constantly evaluate our cooperation with the council. And if over time we don't see mm -hmm. the kind of commitment, the kind of actions that the prime minister and the council itself says they want to take, then we'll reevaluate our relationship with the council. I mean, this work of this council could also affect, you know, the uh, Armenian US relations in general or just in, how would you? For example, if they fail, really mm -hmm. badly fail, they, they don't do their mission, the council is not working, not functional, what will be consequences? Well, I think the consequences of failure, and I don't, I don't want to assume that we're going to see failure, because yeah. I don't. Yeah. But I think if, if we can't address this larger issue of corruption, which I understand is a serious issue here, I know it affects so much of Armenians' daily life, it, it will affect a large part of our relationship, specific areas. For instance, investment. I'm very committed to growing the commercial ties, the investment ties between Armenia and the United States. I think that's something that now is the time to focus on that. But to attract U.S. investment, investors need to know they're entering a climate where everyone is treated the same, where there's no unfair competition, where government services are equally available to everyone. And so if we don't see the Corruption Council address those things, I think that will hurt the opportunities for investment here. You know, we just had a major success with the sale of the Voraton yes, transmission yeah, to a U.S. A major, company. Major deal, right? Major investment. It's the largest U.S. investment here. I think it opens the door for more. It's proof of what happens that we can get investment when a U.S. company believes that they're being treated fairly, that the government treated them like anyone else, we can see that investment come. So that's, that's what I'd like to see the Corruption and Council achieve. Do you see the interest uh, in Armenia by the Armenian government officials to see more U.S. investments here? Do they really want that U.S. Uh, money yes. come to I Armenia? I believe they do. I, I sincerely believe that there's a real interest for more U.S. commercial ties, more U.S. investment here. I think there's an understanding that U.S. investment here, they're good citizens when they come, U.S. Yes. companies, I believe. I, I think they bring um, international standards of operation, management, 
corporate social responsibility. So I think there's, there is real interest. And this is not only Armenian diaspora, right? The, the Absolutely. This is, uh, beyond the Armenian beyond. diaspora. No, and to be honest with you, the Armenian diaspora has done many important and valuable things here. And they've been an enormous resource for the people yeah. of Armenia over the last 25 years and, and before. But it's very important that our relationship be based on solid economic specifics and benefit to both sides. So this is in a, in my effort and the effort I believe in the Armenian government to go beyond the Armenian diaspora as a source of investment, but to the business community in the U.S. as a whole who will come here and find a profitable place to invest. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, there's, uh, Armenia is a recipient you know, of foreign aid, loans, grants. There's huge amounts are coming and the U.S. is the major donor for Armenia for many, many years. And, but we don't see really a progress, despite all your efforts so far. We, we still don't see you know, visible signs of improvement, uh, whatever you do here. And you do very important, you know, you have very important programs here. And why your programs, projects are working in Georgia, in neighboring country, and not here? What's the secret of that? Would you please? Just to clarify, Harry, are you talking about our, our programs against corruption and more transparency? Yes. Yeah. Well, first, I recognize corruption is still a serious issue here. And I talk to Armenians that I meet, I talk to government officials. There's a recognition. It's a real issue here. It's corrosive. And as I said, it's stymieing our shared goals. I do think there's been some progress made, though. Uh, you know, when you look at some outside judges, Transparency International, which is so well respected in this field, mm -hmm. their corruption perception index showed Armenia rising, slightly but rising over the last several years. The World Bank's uh, assessment of the ease of doing business uh, went up, Armenia's ranking went up, in part because corruption was seen as, as being tackled here. So I think there have been some small improvements and they're measurable. I think every country is different have different culture, different environment. Um, so to look at one country and try and pose that model in another or say, well, why did it work there and not here? I don't think that works. I think we have to look for Armenian solutions, Armenian models, partnering with, our, uh, with Armenian government and, and civil society. And um, I think USAID, our main assistance arm here, they have the lead on this. And I think what we're focused on here in Armenia in terms of corruption is improving the delivery of government services so that the Armenian people receive the services that they're entitled to in a fair and equitable way and so that's what we've been focusing on and again I think we've made some progress there. And also Mr. Ambassador this is just uh, uh, about small and medium-sized businesses they're suffering most you know from this corruption because they're they don't have all these connections that big businesses have uh, what would you tell them, you know, would you comfort them saying that, you know, don't worry, <laughs> the health is coming. What, what's your message for our small and medium-sized businesses? They really want to turn this economy, you know, and up and they want to do their best, you know, to improve the economic situation in Armenia, but sometimes they need help. I absolutely agree. The, the cost, the burden of corruption falls on the most vulnerable people in Armenia, the smallest businesses, the small struggling business person who's trying to start um, his or her you know, operations. And I, I understand how difficult that can be. I do know there have been some success stories of small businesses here, both Armenian and foreign. My message to anyone who has an issue with corruption is, find a way to highlight it. Don't be afraid to speak up. I do believe there are tools at your disposal within the government um, to address it and to find someone that will help you address it. We're trying to give you more tools. One, for instance, that I just visited last month, if I could take a moment to describe, yes, sure. um, the Ministry of Social Affairs and, and Labor, we worked with them along with the World Bank to automate all the pension information, all the social benefit information. We also helped them with their call center, the 114 call center, so they could handle all the questions about any social benefit. Mm -hmm. 
And our idea was this will uh, make the whole system of social benefits more transparent. It also provides a tool where if someone knows that some corruption or fraud is happening, they can call and report it. And there's a mechanism to handle that. And I think it's been a real success. I visited the call center. I heard them talking to, to Armenians who were raising on the phone concerns about fraud and abuse. And the automation helped the ministry clear out a lot of people who didn't deserve to be getting pensions or perhaps were long dead, but somebody was still receiving their pension. And because of this specific program, they were able to save enough money at the ministry that they could raise pensions for people that deserve their pensions by 15% over the last two years without any new monies coming from the government. So it was, I think, a real success. Yeah. And is an example to me that when the Armenian people have a tool to fight corruption, they'll use it. I uh, Mr. Ambassador, the, the, our diaspora in the States, they're closely watching, you know, what's happening in the country. And about, and some of them want to come, really, to invest here. What would you tell them now? It, do you think that you know, the conditions will get better than are you urging them to come here to invest? When you go to the, back to the United States, you, usually you have a meeting with yes. them, you talk to them. What's your message? What's your main message? My message is Armenia is, is still an important place to invest. It has some strategic advantages a very educated work workforce, force, excuse me, an important location located between East and West. But I would tell anyone, whether they were a member of the Armenian diaspora or just a, a, an American businessman from Mississippi, mm -hmm. that when they come here, they need to keep their eyes open. They need to, in Ronald Reagan's immortal words, trust but verify. Yes. <laughs> and they need to make sure they know who they're dealing with uh -huh. in terms of their, their partners here. Um, but they should work with us at the embassy. We're here to help them. We're here to help make sure they're, yes. they get treated on a level playing field. And um, if they come with that attitude, I think this is a place where they can make some profit and develop some strong commercial ties that will benefit both countries. You're optimistic. I'm optimistic, partly, Harry, because I've seen how far this country's come. I followed Armenian affairs 25 years ago. And I know what it was like here, you know, with no electricity, no heat. I know what the Armenian people are capable of. They've really overcome a lot. So yes, I'm, I'm optimistic. I don't want to discount the challenges. There are serious challenges here. Corruption is one of them. Fighting it is one of them. But like last night, I met so many committed Armenian partners in civil society and in government mm -hmm. who are aware of this problem and they want to fight it. And that makes me Optimistic. Did you manage to get them together to talk to discuss something? <laughs> <laughs> that was we were hoping. We brought them together. They all enjoyed some good American wine, yes. and I think that made it easier for them to talk. But we bring them together as often as we can. Yes. And um, again, the Anti-Corruption Council. Again, I think it can be a useful tool. I think it's important that civil society give the Corruption Council a chance, see if it can deliver, and that. That can be a forum for other discussions if the Corruption Council moves forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you, Ambassador. Harry. I appreciate Thank it you. very much.